Miss James, I'm back in the shop today, not my shop this time. I'm up at my son and his family's home in Washington State, where we've enjoyed a wonderful holiday. We hope you're enjoying yours, too. Uh, you know, I'm very passionate about my woodworking. My son has a passion all of his own. He makes beer. And we're going to do a brief tour of his brewery today. And we have a project that might be of interest to some of you people who are already brew beer. And uh, it'll be about how to bottle. Uh, we're going to be making a bottling station. And we'll probably go through all the steps that it takes to do it. One thing about this beer, uh, he has thoroughly spoiled my wife and I. We have our favorite beers, and we won't drink them any place but here. So if you like beer, and if you like beer that's fresh and delicious, you ought to be making your own beer too. Um, hopefully this will get you started. Um, so let me introduce Wade, and he can take us on a brief tour of his uh, brewery. This is my son Wade, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his brewery, how he got started maybe. How, how did you get started? Well, I've been wanting to brew for a long time, and my wife got me a kit. So one of those kits that you get at a home brew shop. And it comes with the malts and some grains and some yeast and you know, it's just a box filled with some ingredients. And uh, I sat there for probably a couple of months while I thought about actually trying to brew my first beer. And finally, it was, actually it was probably over a holiday, you know, eight years ago, because I started when my son was born, or right before he was born, or he was born. Um, I just decided, let's do it. And I made a beer, and, and it wasn't amazing, but it was fun, like, it was something that I made. Just, I, I equate it to the same kind of sense of value you get out of making a project in your shop. You know, it's, you know, it may not be as amazing as anything anyone else could make, but you made it, right? And so, uh, it was a beer that I made, and I thought it was delicious, and I enjoyed it, and I had all these bottles, and so I just kept going. So I started on my stove in the kitchen, and eventually I ended up, as you can see, getting quite a few other uh, vessels and uh, pieces of equipment, and it's turned into quite the hobby. So. Uh, well, I think I'm going to grab the camera by hand so we can get some close-ups of some of the things he's made. So, I am by no means a professional brewer, uh, but I do have a lot of fun home brewing. And so, this is the system that I've constructed over many years. Um, I actually started just with this first pot over here, so today I use that as my boil kettle. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but eventually I decided that I wanted to move off of the stove and end up making my own uh, all grain system. So an all grain system means that you're going to start with the barley, the wheat, the grains themselves, and you're going to end up doing what's called a mash. And a mash is actually a process, it's a chemical process where you are activating enzymes that are latent within the barley and within the grains, and those enzymes actually convert starches into soluble sugars those sugars are going to end up being the things that then yeast convert into alcohol. And so moving to all grain means that you're actually creating your own sugars from the grains. The reason you want to do this is it gives you a lot more control over the profile of the beer that you want to make. You have a lot more control over the flavor. Um, there's, just, there's just a lot of things that you can do that you can't do if you start with a extract, meaning if you start with the uh, the dry malt extract or the liquid malt extract, then you're subject to whatever the people that created the extract did, meaning that if they ended up mashing at a higher temperature or lower temperature, you have no control over it because they did it. So when you do all grain, you have full control. So the system that I've ended up constructing is uh, called a HERM system, H-E-R-M and then S, HERMS. So it stands for Heat Exchange Recirculated Mash. And so this right here is my mash tun. So if you end up looking inside at the bottom, you're going to see that there's a little bit of a screen at the bottom of the kettle. And what, what we do is we end up filling this up with some water at a certain temperature, usually around 150 degrees, and we end up adding our grains to it. And so the grains end up sitting on that screen. And then from there, what we do is we end up uh, recirculating the water, and we're going to regulate the temperature of the system through um, the circulation of, of the, what is now called a wart, because it's converting sugars uh, from starches, it's now a wart. We basically pump it from here 
through one of the pumps down here on this side, and then out, and then into this vessel through through this this opening here. This vessel is called the the um, HLT, the hot liquor tank. And so this is how I regulate the temperature. Notice that this is actually sitting on a burner. And so this burner turns on and off to regulate the temperature inside of the HLT. Meanwhile, wort is flowing through, and if you look inside of here, you'll end up noticing that there's a bunch of coils. And so the coils will end up picking up the, the heat, or the, you know, basically the temperature is regulated uh, via these coils inside of the HLT, and that's what ends up then controlling the temperature inside of the mash tun. So basically, it's a, it's a process of mashing in that takes, you know, 60, 90 minutes, and we're continually recirculating uh, wort through this whole system and then controlling the temperature here. And you'll notice that there's a temperature controller right here. That's actually plugged into a sensor, a PID. Well, it's right here. So it's plugged in here. And this ends up getting plugged into this, uh, this thermometer as well as one here. And then I can, I can monitor the temperatures at these two different points. And based on the temperature that I'm going for, it will end up firing the, uh, the burner underneath here. So different kinds of beers mash in wort at different temperatures and different durations. Well, they mash in at different temperatures for sure. So wort, again, is the soluble, it's the sugars in, uh, inside of the, inside of the, uh, the mixture, so the water, that's, that's what the wort is. Uh, W-O-R-T, not wort, wort. Um, and so, uh, absolutely, different beer styles have different, um, temperatures for mashing because at different temperatures for mashing you're going to activate different enzymes and based on those enzymes that are activated they're going to construct those sugar molecules in different ways and the reason that matters is uh, based on this, the shape of those sugar molecules yeast will end up interacting with them differently and so you'll have different characteristics coming out later in your beer so it's, it's really interesting that's what's fun about this hobby is there's all kinds of science going on now one thing I forgot to mention is that all of the water starts here in the HLT and one of the things that I started doing only a couple of years ago is actually creating my own water chemistry based on the beer that I'm going to end up brewing. So you'll notice right here I have a, um, a system for uh, effectively cleaning the water. So basically it's a reverse osmosis system. So I, I draw water off from my water source over there in the corner and it comes in through through this tube and basically runs through all these filters including a reverse osmosis membrane here and I'll end up getting wastewater which just runs off into the street and then I end up getting uh, treated water and so what it does is it basically gets me to you know ground zero so like uh, a water profile where it's completely devoid of minerals and everything right so chlorine, chloride, uh, total dissolved solids all that stuff ends up getting removed and so once I have that, then I can reconstruct the water chemistry based on the style of beer that I'm brewing. Mm. And so that, that makes it kind of fun because if I'm going for a, like a super hot forward beer, lots of hops, etc., I'll construct a water profile that has maybe more gypsum and more other things uh, inside of the beer uh, versus if I'm making a Hefeweizen. I might style it more like the water profiles you'll find in Germany and elsewhere. So that's a lot of fun too, so you can, you can play around with that. Anyway, all of it comes through, flows through the system into, like, the, so we've got our wort, we've been mashing in for, I don't know, however long, 60, 90 minutes. And eventually we draw it off into the boil kettle, where we'll boil it for 60 to 90 minutes, again, based on the recipe. We'll add our hops, we'll add any spices, whatever we want into it. And then we end up wanting to cool it, and this is when we start and get ready to do fermentation. So we actually draw it off, and if you look down here, I've got a counterflow system where I can end up cooling the boiling wort. So I'll actually get the wort um, that is in, the, in the, the boil kettle down to probably somewhere around 68 degrees, something that yeast likes, and I'll end up pumping it now into my uh, conical fermenter. And so this is a relatively new addition to my brewery. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, actually, underneath here, there's a heated jacket, so I can, I can heat it. If you notice here, there's a couple of these, these tubes coming out. That's because there's a, a coil in there. That actually will run into a unit here where I've got a glycol mixture where I can end up using this with a pump to cool it. So basically, I can end up dialing in the temperature of the conical fermenter 
to exactly what I want it to be for when I'm fermenting. And then I can do all kinds of different things. Um, so recently, the beer that I'm drinking is a pale ale that I ended up under pressure uh, extracting and pulling directly from the conical fermenter into the kegs. And they're now in the, they're now in, the um, in, in my uh, uh, kegerator where they're uh, under pressure, they're, they're picking up CO2 and they're getting carbonated. But uh, what's neat about this is using this system, I can do one of two things. I can fill a keg like I did. I can also decide to go straight from this system into a bottle. And so that actually is a, this has all been a very long way of setting up today's project. So hopefully you've, you've stuck with us. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to do is to be able to have uh, a way where it was really easy for me to bottle at scale. So if I ended up brewing five or 10 gallons of beer, uh, and if I wanted to go straight into bottles, I'd like to be able to do that um, you know, easily uh, with, with not a lot of trouble. The other thing is there's two ways to bottle. You can end up carbonating your beer before you bottle. This is something that's done kind of in an industrial scale. Uh, certainly is a lot easier. You can end up carbonating inside of the conical fermenter or in a keg and then filling up bottles. But if you do that, you end up needing to do it at pressure because otherwise the, the carbonated beer is just gonna foam up. So the system that we're gonna be building today, this, this addition to the brewery, is gonna end up allowing us to fill bottles under pressure so that you can end up taking carbonated beer or under uncarbonated beer and actually fill up a bottle without foaming uh, and do so in a way where it's really easy for you to uh, do multiple beers at one time. And, and the key thing is my dad isn't usually here. It's usually just me. So uh, it needs to be uh, an easy enough system for someone to do by themselves. So uh, I think we're going to transition and we'll get started. All right, so this is the device that we use for filling the bottles. It's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you could build this your own, yourself if you wanted to. I ended up getting this from morebeer.com. Basically, there's a couple of elements to it. The first is right here, we actually connect this side to our beer. So this will end up getting connected to a quick disconnect, plugged into a keg or plugged directly into the conical fermenter. So beer will end up coming in through here. On this side, we're going to plug this hose into uh, our CO2 regulator so that we can end up keeping this under pressure. It's not going to be a lot of pressure, it's a few pounds of pressure. Now, what happens is based on the position of this, of this, um, this, this ball valve in here, uh, you're going to be able to either let beer flow in um, or you're going to end up letting CO2 flow in. So what happens is you put a bottle on, you end up opening it up so that CO2 can get in, and you, you twist this right here so that it basically can evacuate all of the oxygen and all the air out of the bottle. So you're, you're getting the bottle primed and ready to go. Then you close this and what's going to happen is it's going to build a little bit of pressure. So that pressure is important, especially uh, if you're going to be filling carbonated beer. Because if you don't have it under pressure, then what happens is as soon as the beer gets in there, it's going to end up foaming. So once it's under pressure, you'll turn it off and then you'll end up opening it up uh, so that beer can flow in. Now, if there's too much pressure, then the beer doesn't go in. So it's got to be, you know, the right balance. You can also, as it's flowing, as the beer flows in, CO2 needs to escape. So you can control the flow rate of the beer coming in based on the, the CO2 as it, is, as it gets pushed out of the, the bottle. So that's, that's the device. It's pretty straightforward. And this is the, this is the device that's going to be mounted to the brew, stand, the brew station and the, the uh, bottling station that we're going to build that's going to get attached here and make it such that we can end up pretty easily bottling beer. And we'll show a diagram of what we intend to build in just a second. All right, so here's the chicken scratch that uh, highlights how and what we're going to end up building. So um, real quick, if we zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that over here we've got um, we've got this, this uh, where the mash tun is. We're going to end up using the frame and the, the, the brew stand effectively as the basis for the bottling station. So right here is a 2x6 that we're going to end up taking and we're going to actually put a couple of holes into the 2x6 into the and we're going to end up drilling the holes through 
uh, this board here, which is also a two by six in a couple of places so that we can end up using some, um, some screws uh, and effectively mount it onto the brew stand. So that way I don't have to have a separate thing sitting around the brewery. It's something that I can put away when I'm done and we can just attach and get it, get it, get it out of the way. Now the next thing you'll notice is, and this is not to scale by the way, is there's a, there's a two by, well it says two by eight. There's basically gonna be a board at the bottom and that's where we're gonna set the bottle down. So, you know, and it's gotta be big enough to fit like one of those 22 ounce bombers as well as a 12 ounce bottle. So that's gonna end up getting set down here. Then we're gonna have a two by six that kinda goes up now. Again, not to scale, but we want it to be about at the height or maybe a little bit shorter than a traditional long neck bottle. And that's because we're gonna end up drilling two half inch, uh, uh, half inch holes into the top here and here down in, and we're gonna end up sinking into that um, some aluminum tubing. Into that aluminum tubing then we're gonna take these, uh, what is it, a 3 8 inch screw I think, and we're gonna end up putting it into the tubing and then attached to it we're gonna put a piece of wood at the top with a hinge and another piece of wood and then the device that we actually use to end up filling the bottles of beer. So basically at the end of the day what we're going to end up having is something that you can move up and down here so that you can end up getting different heights based on the different bottles but it's also going to have a hinge right here so that you can take it and you can end up pivoting it out so that you can slide a bottle in on an angle and then put it back down vertical so that you can set the bottle down. So that's, that's the goal. So we're speeding up the video and I'll do some narrating on how the beer bottling station is going to be built while you can watch him build it. Uh, Wade was lucky enough that he had a bunch of wood left over from a previous project so we didn't have to buy very much. So he's marking the mounting holes. He's got it clamped to the front of the uh, station. Um, and he's marking, he's going to have four holes to mount this uh, using a half inch drill and he's going to drill through both pieces of wood. Um, and then uh, we're going to use half inch bolts through with wing nuts so that it would be easy to put on and take off. So that's the completion of the mounting system. Now he's going to be cutting various pieces of wood uh, and that'll become the actual beer bottling uh, station itself. So uh, we're going to mount this piece of wood to that previous piece of wood and he's going to drill some pilot holes into the top just to make sure they're straight because we're going to be actually drilling uh, some pretty deep holes with a half inch drill bit and that's the holes that the aluminum tubes are going to be inserted into and those will guide the threaded rods that will allow the station to uh, become taller or shorter as needs be. So very careful to drill these plumb. We're just cutting that piece to size Making sure everything is plumb. And figuring out the proper depth of these aluminum tubes. And we used blue tape to mark how deep those holes had to be drilled. Just an easy way to uh, be accurate. So once the hole is deep enough, we're going to mark how deep the tube should be inserted into the wood and then tap it in and then cut it off so that, like that and then tap the rest in, and now we have a sleeve for those screw threaded rods to slide up and down. It'll, it'll just keep it snug all the way up and all the way down. So those are the threaded rods that we're gonna use. 
um, and we're going to mount a piece of wood to the top which will actually hold the bottling apparatus and we'll be able to slide that up and down as previously stated. So there's the upper piece of wood there. And then we can cut off the threaded rods, just put jam nuts up on top so that everything stays put. And so now we have to break it in a little bit. It's a little bit tight, but as we used it, it, it got a bunch looser. So, so now we're gonna actually mount the piece of wood that we've prepared to that front piece that's gonna be uh, bolted on. Uh, he's making sure everything's square and plumb. And we'll glue and screw it. And we took a two by eight, cut the corners off to make the platform uh, that'll be notched out and then screwed to that previous two by four. So the easiest way to cut out that piece, the, put, put holes in the corner so you can turn the corner with a jigsaw. And then we're gonna just cut it the size of a two by four. And he's gonna glue and screw that into place. Clamp it first. Um, and we're using, I believe, two and a half inch dry, uh, decking screws to hold this whole thing together. And that's the hinge up on the upper piece that's gonna be attached to the other uh, piece of wood. So that'll allow the station to tip um, so you can slide a bottle in underneath. All right, so you've seen what we've been doing over the last several hours, uh, cutting up pieces and trying different things out. And so we wanted to show you where we ended up. Basically what you saw us building are uh, a set of screws that end up getting, uh, they go through and are capped up here. And so this gives us the ability to move it up and down so that we can end up uh, adjusting based on, you know, whether we're doing a 22 ounce bomber or we're just doing a regular 12 ounce um, long neck. And so this will end up uh, being here at the height that we want. And then for uh, the device that actually fills, uh, which I believe we showed already, this will end up being mounted right here. And so with the hinge, we can also tilt it out so that we can slip a bottle on, move it down, and then just put it into place. So we're going to end up mounting this by taking these little little screws and screwing, screwing it in and uh, they'll be sticking out a little bit and facing to the left uh, on either side and then uh, we're basically just going to take these little uh, hose clamps and slide it uh, into, you know, behind the, uh, the, the bent screw and tighten it so it'll end up getting tight tightened right onto here. And so we think that'll end up being a pretty good, pretty good mount for it. So, uh, so we'll catch you in a bit. explain how this works. So here I've got a keg full of beer. This is actually a English mild ale. Uh, nice, nice and light, roasty, uh, medium bodied beer, uh, quite delicious. Um, this is a carbon dioxide tank and I've got two lines. Um, it's running between like 10 to 14 psi. One of the lines is coming up here to the keg and that's keeping the keg pressurized so that it'll push the beer out this other line comes in here, and what we're going to use that for is for purging the oxygen out of the bottle and then keeping the bottle under pressure while we fill it with carbonated beer. If we didn't have it under pressure, then the, the 
beer would just foam up and it would be a total mess. And that's actually the beauty of this, of this system. Um, a couple of notes, we have not yet polyurethaned it. Um, I will be doing that after James leaves. Um, so, uh, but we didn't want to you know, end this without having showed you uh, the bottling process. So I put a rag here just because I don't want it to stain the wood yet ahead of us using the polyurethane on it. Um, and so here I've got uh, some sanitary solution um, in a bucket. Uh, I've already sanitized the bottle. Um, I've also got my uh, bottle capper in here being sanitized. I've got a, a, a glass here filled with sanitary solution with some bottle caps. And then I filled this bottle up with uh, sanitizer as well um, so that it, it kind of allows me to rest it in there, sanitize, and um, I've already kind of pre-loaded pre the line with, with everything. So we should be pretty much set to go. I'm going to go ahead and get a new bottle. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to purge all the oxygen out of the bottle. That's going to give it a longer shelf life. And uh, we'll do that. Let me make sure I do this in the right direction. Let's go ahead and fill this with CO2. And we're going to purge all the oxygen by letting it basically leak out. So that's getting rid of the oxygen in there. All right, so now it's pressurized. So we're going to go ahead and start. This opens up the flow, but notice nothing's coming out. And that's because this is under pressure. So we actually need to slowly open this valve so that it, see how when we start to let some of it escape, then the, the beer ends up filling. So that is now filling at a, uh, okay, right, we can turn it up a little bit. Um, I'll play with this a little bit. It's been a while since I've used it, um, but there's a balance in the rate of filling it so that you don't end up getting too much uh, carbonation or too much foam in there from the carbonation. But um, the best part about this is this is totally hands-free at this point. Um, and so I can, I can be here and in the past, I'd be on the floor and I'd be, you know, trying to keep all these things kind of up and going and holding on to this myself. And now we've got this perfect station for it. And I mean, this really, this is really going to change my approach and my my willingness to bottle. I'll, I'll be a lot more willing now to, to bottle than I have in the past. Um, so I'm just going to turn that up a little bit more. But you can see it's it's uh, filling up very nicely. And uh, when it gets pretty much to the top, we're going to see some of the foam come out here a little bit. That's totally normal. It's just going to be uh, get rid of some of that foam. But I'm going to stop it right about here at the top. So start slowing it down. Right about there. Okay. We'll shut this off. And um, so now what I'm going to do is, is actually, now that it's closed, I'm going to open this up again. And any additional CO2. That? Okay. Uh, any CO2 now I'm going to release from there so that it's not still under pressure. And we can slide this off. Alright, that's it there. Get a cap. Back on. Capper. And a little bit awkward here, but doing it for your sake. And there we have it, perfectly bottled beer. So, pretty neat. Hopefully that's not staining right now. But uh, I'm tickled. This is this is fantastic. Um, this is uh, everything I hoped for. So, hope uh, hope you found this interesting. Well, thanks for watching. This was an interesting video for me um, for Wayne to show us how he makes and bottles beer. I never knew how it was done until tonight. I know it's a different kind of video than I normally do, but I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. Hit the subscribe button down there. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and come on back next time because I'm headed back to Colorado tomorrow. We're going to do some more videos with the CNC machine. But thanks to Wade for showing us his brewery and how he's going to be bottling beer from now on. Come back soon.